Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway, lovely to have your company of course as always and today I'm going to be reviewing this little tank engine and I bought this from a train fair a little while ago, I'll talk about that in a moment but essentially it is the GNR, the Great Northern Railway J13 locomotive and I have shown this a few times, I've shown it in running sessions and I think my tank engine running session I think it was in and every time I've shown it so far everybody, well not everybody but a couple of people have said no no it's not a J13 it's a J52, now yeah I hold my hands up I'm not an expert on this so I could be wrong as well but I always thought because this is in the Great Northern livery uh, that this would be considered a J13 because it was the LNER that or reclassified them the J52s and that wouldn't have been the case well they were still in the Great Northern livery so that's why I'm calling it the J13 if I am wrong and it is a J52 I'm sorry but uh, that's why I'll call it today but you know what I mean it's a little tank engine so yes this is marked up at £39.75 but this was from a train fair and it was a while ago so I don't remember exactly what I paid but I would normally try and get a little bit off so expect that I paid about £30 for this or thereabouts which I think is a, a good price for this and it is a lovely little thing so hopefully you're going to like seeing it today I, I know I'm going to enjoy getting it running again so let's take a look at it well let's get it out so here it is then, and like I was saying, for £35 or thereabouts, I was fairly happy with this, but I've got to admit that the state of this box uh, leaves quite a bit to be desired. In fact, on the end here, as you can see, it is missing its label, so uh, we, go, we don't know once and for all whether this was um, a J13 or a J52. But I'm going to stick with my original guess of this being a, J13, uh, a J13, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I should have really looked this one up on Hornby Guide, actually, to find out uh, when this one was made, but I would guess that it would be sort of maybe late 90s at the earliest and possibly, more likely, somewhere in the uh, mid-2000s. But let's get this one out then. Not a lot to see in terms of the box because, as I say, it's missing all labelling or anything like that. So let's get it out straight away. There we go. Opened it at this end today. How interesting. Okay, and let's get this out. I realise you've not had a proper look at this yet because, you know, it's all covered in tissue paper. So let me grab it. Here it is. And uh, once again, with locos like this, it was really the livery that uh, attracted me. Just look at that. It is beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. So I hope you're going to enjoy seeing this today. I know I'm going to enjoy reviewing her and running her, as I always say. I always seem to say that. But that's true. I just, you know, I love doing this. This is one of my favourite things to do, and I look forward to it every couple of days when it comes around. So anyway, here's one or two shout outs and also a little bit of history on the J13s. Let's get to it. So hello to your boy, Coffee Pot Productions and Abzi Trains 07, and it's his birthday on the 28th of December, so I hope you have a lovely day on, on the 28th. Anyway, the J13 was designed for the Great Northern Railway by Henry Ivatt in 1897, and the class was based on the earlier J14, also known as the J53, presumably under the LNER ownership, and it was intended for shunting. The class became part of the LNER in 1923, where, as I've been saying, they were reclassified as the J52. Depending on where they worked, where in the country, locomotives were fitted with condensing equipment so that they could run underground on the metropolitan lines. Specifically, those working in and around the London area would have had this fitted. 85 were built in total over a period of 12 years, but only one was preserved, and that is number 8846. So there she is then, the very, very beautiful GNR J13 up against the white background. And I thought I'd better look the model up just to be absolutely sure because I probably do a bit too much speculation on this channel. So sure enough, my estimate of the early 2000s was spot on. This version, this particular version of the model, came out in 2000. So yep, yeah, that's about what you'd expect. But in fact, the model itself was first released, the tooling that is, in 1981. So that means that this tooling is uh, very, you know, it's over 30 years old old on the march really to being 40 years old. I must admit though that this later version, the 2000 onwards version, does look a little bit better than the 1980s version uh, because looking at the photographs that you can see this brown colour here on the running board and on the pipework here, that brown was more of a red colour on the original 1981 version and because of that I thought it looked a little bit toy-like really but uh, this one looks very very nice and uh, very refined I would say. I would say the livery is definitely refined. Now those of you who thought that this was 
was a J52. Obviously, you'll you know it swings and roundabouts because it's it's really all in the livery. Because apparently this model was released as a J52 over the years as well. But obviously that would have been in a LNER or maybe even a BR livery. I'm not 100% sure. I've not got one myself, but yes, they did release this as a J52. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the detail. We'll look at the painted detail first. As you can see, yes, it's in this gorgeous Great Northern livery. And as you can see by the side of the tanks here, which hold the water, you've got the GNR applied to the side, which is done very, very nicely, as you can tell. And that's also lined with this sort of white and uh, a black banding, if you like, going around the tanks there, which is fantastic. And uh, that sort of motif is picked up all over the model. On the sides of the cab here, you can see that is picked out. And also on the wheel arches, or the splashes, as they're better known. And the splash also have that lovely gold lining on them too which I think is just a, a gorgeous gorgeous touch. As I've already mentioned the running board is done in the typical Great Northern uh, sort of brown colour and also the little pipe work here which I suppose that might be the condensing equipment possibly I'm not 100% sure on that I'm definitely no expert but that is also fitted onto there and I don't know whether it's part of the tooling or not or whether it's separately fitted but it certainly looks very finely done. There's a few other separately fitted parts as well, including the safety valves and the whistles here, which are metal, and that is always nice to see because uh, Hornby these days occasionally use plastic for those, and they don't look as effective, in my opinion. You've also got a fair few handrails you've got on top of the water tanks here. You've got a couple fitted there, and also, of course, on the side, as you will already have seen, you've got some fitted there. The smoke box, which protrudes out the front of the water tanks here, has also got its own uh, handrail, but it doesn't, unfortunately, have a separately fitted smoke box dart and I suppose that's fairly common for the 1980s which is when this tooling was first produced. The buffer beams are fairly basic there's not an awful lot of detail on there although I believe on the front you have got the running number there printed on. The buffers too as is quite typical with models from the 1980s aren't sprung but because of that they are left to be a little bit more realistic which is quite nice to see. I didn't mention also that you've got the running numbers on the side of the cab, well, on the side of the coal bunker really, and also on the back of the coal bunker where there is uh, more of that very lovely lining. The coal in the coal bunker is, you know, fairly old fashioned, it's a little bit uh, chunky looking and I'm, I'm fairly sure it isn't removable so you'd have to do some serious surgery if you wanted to remove that, but that's not a massive deal. And also as you can see the, uh, the rear windows there on the cab look like they have that lovely grill effect and I believe they're glazed as well and the ones on the front are also glazed which is a really nice Nice touch. Inside the cab, unfortunately, we don't have any painted cab detail, but you can see that Bill and Ben, the uh, the crew, have been glued in there. They're not painted, but uh, they are, you know, a nice inclusion nonetheless. I reckon they probably weren't done in the Chinese factory, though, because, as you can see, uh, Ben here, or is it Bill, I'm not sure, has got a bit of a, a dangerous lean on him, and uh, I've noticed also there's a, a few gluey marks on the inside of the cab, so I reckon the previous owner must have done that, because, of course, this was second-hand. But as you can tell, it is a very lovely model I think it's just got charm hasn't it it's tiny and it's just got such a, a nice nice livery and I know nice isn't a very good word I'll have to come up with a better one uh, splendid it is a splendid livery I mean it's it's enough to rival James isn't it it really is okay well I've, oh, and I've noticed also the rods appear to be on upside down look I suppose those little nibs are supposed to face upwards aren't they how interesting I might have to fix that. Anyway, be right back in just a second. I'll fix that before we get her running, and uh, we'll see how she runs. And believe me, she's a very, very good runner. Okay, so there she is down onto the track, and you'll notice she is facing the other way to what she normally does, and I just decided that today I'd let her run uh, cab first, just for a change. So that's going to be nice. Because she's a shunting engine, I thought she could have a little goods train today. So there it is, a little mixed goods train there with the, all kinds of different wagons on there. But it's only a little one, so uh, it's not going to be too much for her. Anyway, let's get her started then. Let's give her a little bit of juice and see how she does at those slow speeds. I'm not sure which way she's set to start with, but I'm hoping she'll go forwards away from the express point. So I'm turning it up. And as you can see, she's just kicked in there at a very, very nice slow speed. Now she's got the sort of regular motor inside her that all of the 060s have got, but I must say she's a lot smoother and a lot quieter than some of the later ones I've got. So have Hornby replaced the motors that they've used in recent years to more sort of cheap and nasty ones? I don't know, but uh, certainly this one runs absolutely beautifully. It's only got pickups on the front and back wheels though. Hey, oh, got a police car going by. So sometimes it does cut out on the express points, although I have just had her warming up. Oh. Ah, oh, she almost did it. I was going to say she was a lot worse than this when I first put her on the track today. 
Maybe Archie's off again. But at any kind of speed, she gets away with it just fine. So as you can tell, a very, very nice runner. I think originally these had traction tyres on them, but uh, mine doesn't. But that's okay, I don't like traction tyres. I don't like traction tyres anyway. Okay, let's go and couple. Nice and steadily does it. Has she got them? I think so. I heard the I heard the couplings click. So that's good news. I'm going to get her started then very soon. But before I do, keep an eye out on the rest of the layout to see which other tank engines you can spot. And there is an odd one out today, so see if you can let me know in the comments which one that is. But for now, let me get her started. And once she's off, I'll show you who else is going to be running with her. Or what other engines, I should say. They're not people, are they? <laughs> But there we go, there's that nice little goods train, and I do like doing mixed goods trains, I think they look fantastic. And on the middle line, you're all going to be very, very pleased to see this one, uh, because look who is alive and well. Yes, if you didn't see my last review, which I think was the Toby review, I ran this Terrier, and it went up in smoke and flames. I put just a few too many coaches on it, and it was too much for her. Now, I've got uh, older locos that can wheel slip like she did all day without even breaking a sweat, but uh, obviously you mustn't overload these. Uh, maybe I just got a bad motor, I don't know, but uh, I'm certainly not ever going to overload her like that again. I didn't realise they would uh, burn out as quickly and as easily as that. But uh, Peter Spares is who I'm going to thank for that. I got uh, one from his eBay shop for £7 something. A new motor that is, not, uh, not a new engine or any, a new chassis, just a new motor. Fitted it myself. Works beautifully, as you can tell. So there she is, the Whitechapel Terrier. I couldn't just let her sit and rot, so I fixed her up. And finally then, on the inside line, she's coming round now. I've forgotten the name. It's the original, well, it's not the original Triang one, but it's Triang's J80-something, J82, I'm going to guess. I don't think that's right. Uh, but this is the sort of later version with the uh, Hornby chassis. So there she is, another LNER tank engine in the BR livery this time, with some ex LNER teak coaches. So enjoy the running session and see which other engines you can spot. There is something just lovely about the J13 though, isn't there? Look at that. Such a lot of class, no pun intended. And uh, it looks like a passenger engine, doesn't it, with uh, how beautiful the livery was. But uh, nope, I've put her with goods today, just uh, even though it doesn't feel right. There she goes, making her way up Gordon's Hill. It's only a little train she's got, so I wouldn't really expect to see any wheel slip, but you never know, do you? Not that you'd tell from this shot. I'll have to get a better shot later on. Just uh, on the other side of that passenger footbridge. This is another very elegant little runner. It's not a J72, is it? Ah, oh, it's terrible that I've forgotten. I don't plan in advance what I'm going to run alongside them, so uh, I just sort of grabbed it off the shelf and I I admit I can't remember what class it was. Sorry. And it's lovely to see Whitechapel running again. I'm not going to blame Hornby entirely for that because I saw her wheel slipping and I didn't do anything about it. So I can't say that it was a bad engine, you know, a bad, an entirely bad motor. I'm a bit surprised that it burnt out, obviously, but... It wouldn't be fair if I, uh, if I didn't take some of the blame. Everybody looking forward to Christmas then? Let me know in the comments if you've asked Santa for anything train related. And you can all compare notes if you like. <laughs> the layout's definitely looking Christmassy though, and it has been for a few weeks now. It's funny how that happens every year about this time. Let's see how she does then now that we're at the top of Gordon's Hill. Yep, yeah. I can't really see any wheel slip to be honest. Not that we're expecting any because it's it's not a huge train for her. And she's got a fair bit of weight to her, I didn't mention that, but you know, she's not uh, terribly light. Here are some of my ratings then for the Hornby Class J13. Detail, I've given this 7 out of 10. I was generally quite impressed with the detail, but you can tell that it is lacking a little bit in some areas, especially when compared to modern ones. Performance, 9 out of 10. Generally, she's a fantastic performer, as you can clearly tell, except the fact that she's only got 4 pickups rather than 6 means that she does struggle a little bit, uh, quite noticeably, on my express points. 
Character though, 10 out of 10, that's a personal opinion one. Yes, the detail means that it's not going to be necessarily as accurate as it might be if Hornby had told this, uh, say, last year or this year. But, to be honest, just the colour and, you know, the way it runs and the way it looks, just uh, for me, it really does it, and it ticks all the boxes. So perhaps it's a little bit biased, I don't know, but I've given it 10 out of 10. Build quality, 9 out of 10. As a general rule, I don't like engines that uh, clip onto the body. Um, I prefer engines that screw onto the body. I mean, chassis that screw onto the body. But generally, that's not a huge concern, so I've given it 9 out of 10. Value then, 30 to 40 pounds, I think is fair value for this, even though it was second hand, so I've given it 8 out of 10. Overall then, that's a very fair score of 8.55 out of 10, and that ranks, uh, let's see, 27th, just above Donald and Douglas, and below the Raven Q6. Well, it's been lovely to see some more tank engines doing some work, and uh, as I said, very, very nice to see uh, old Whitechapel running nicely again. Um, yep, yeah, definitely relieved to have her going again, and for £7, something that it was, including postage, I thought I could afford to do that and bring her back to life. So I did, and I'm pleased I did, because she, she is lovely. Don't know if I'll buy any more Terriers, though. <laughs> that I can't guarantee. Okay then folks, well I hope you enjoyed that, that was uh, another nice look at a lovely little tank engine and I think that may be my last review of the year. I'll have to check my plans for that, but I think that might be the last one. It's not the last video of the year yet though, we've still got a few left to go, but uh, yeah, I think it's all running sessions now, so hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you did, please leave me a like or even a comment because I do love it when you guys get in touch for some feedback or whatever. And also, if you'd like to check out the Facebook or Twitter pages, you know where those are. The links for those are down below. But for now, I'll say once again, hope you're having a lovely Christmas time. I know it's not quite Christmas just yet, but um, hope you're having a nice time all the same. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Alright, thanks again for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody.